That's a famous Modigliani painting that's at the center of an investigation led by part the Fifth Estate. A whole mystery surrounding that piece is called Seated Man with a Cane. There are secret documents that we're learning of in connection with the Panama Papers that have the whole world talking this week that may help solve part of it. So it's one of these stories you're going to see tonight on the Fifth Estate called Stolen Treasures. Can't wait to find out more about it because host Mark Kelly with me this morning. Thanks for coming in. Always you gave me the thumbs up for Modigliani. Yes, you did a great job Not with that Not bad one. on that one. <laughs> How is it linked, this particular piece, to the Panama Papers? Well, it's, it's a... a it's a really intriguing story about the mystery of the masterpiece that this uh, beautiful painted, uh, painting, A Seated Man with a Cane, once uh, hung on the walls in a gallery in Paris, okay. owned by a Jewish gallery owner. Second World War breaks out, Nazis move into Paris. As you can see, that painting vanishes, disappears. It's a painting that's almost a century old now. So what happens? Well, it, it turns up hanging on the wall in New York. Decades later, mm -hmm. the grandson of that Parisian owner says that painting belongs to our family. The owner in the, uh, in the gallery says, well, actually, we don't own it. It's owned by some big corporation, nameless, faceless corporation. Where is that corporation located? Panama. So as we see the leak of the Panama Papers this week that have really given us an, an insight into how the wealthiest in the world, where they put their money in these uh, shell companies and these tax havens, it's also given us a bit of a clue about who could really own this Modigliani. Now, there, the dispute has been going on for years. It's being led by a Canadian who's representing the grandson of that Parisian owner who really wants to reclaim that painting, get it back into the family. We think we've now uncovered evidence that shows the true provenance of who owns this, which could help settle a decades-long dispute. I that's about amazing the, because this has been in the news it, for years. For years. And it's interesting information. The dispute goes on. But here's the kicker, Heather. Okay. Beautiful painting, as you can see right there. It's estimated could be worth $35 million. As this dispute rages on, it is now sitting in a bonded warehouse in Geneva in the dark where nobody can see it while the dispute rages on. Amazing. Part of the stolen treasures, but since you're calling it treasures, it's plural, and you lead us on another investigation, wildlife smuggling, and the Canadian agents who are trying to stop this. What's your part of the piece today? Well, uh, wildlife smuggling, this is something I knew very little about until I started looking into this. And we're talking about things like elephant tusks. Of course, that always mm -hmm. sort of galvanizes the mind when you think about that, but rhino horns as well. This is a multi-billion dollar illegal activity that's going on in the world. Ten years ago, nobody cared about rhinos. Now, rhinos are being killed by slaughtered about a thousand every year, ever since, which came out of Southeast Asia, that there was this belief that a rhino horn could cure cancer. Mm. So now the rhinos are being slaughtered, their horns being cut off and sold. So uh, there's a, a team in Canada that's now cracking down on the smuggling, 85 elite agents that work for Environment Canada. They allowed me to come into a, a, an exclusive warehouse. It's a secret. They won't, won't even let me say where the location is. Really? As I'm allowed into this warehouse where they show me some of the contraband. You can see these so are some the... some of their seized goods? They some of the seized goods that they actually have there, including a rhino horn. So I was holding a rhino horn. We're seeing here now, these are the agents that uh, patrol the borders. They're looking and sea containers. They're looking in parcels that are being mailed in to Canada. They're looking at the border for smuggled goods okay, so because a lot of this of stuff goods? is moved by mail as you try to get it into Canada. There's millions of dollars every year that is smuggled into Canada of this, these endangered species, things like a rhino horn. So I was able to hold a rhino horn in my hand. It weighs a couple of pounds. This rhino horn is worth about $300,000 on the black market right now because if you grind it down, this belief that somehow it can be used to Is help cure cancer. Alligator head, we alligator saw head that was if, uh, in the mail. Uh, they're, they're called in by Canada Post if there's suspicious packages. Uh, I, I've been my mind has been opened up to the to the strange oddity of what collectors do and the products that they move. But, of course, the heartbreaking side of this is many of these things. He, here he's holding a, uh, a package of tiger bone, that is ground tiger bone, that's said to be, if taken it, uh, for an herbal remedy, it's used as an aphrodisiac. Is it virility or something like that? Something yes, like that. Yes. And, and when I was allowed into this um, uh, room where they've seized some of the contraband, 
one of the weirdest things, I mean, there was like shrunken monkey heads. This is the room that I was allowed into. Uh, a, a rare coral that's being turned into art. Uh, tortoises. Uh, uh, ah. a, a lot of these things are endangered species. I also had a, held in my hand a bottle of cobra wine. There's a bottle of wine that's got a real cobra stuffed into it. Because if you drink the wine, it's supposed to give you some magical cobra powers. Really? Wow. And then you're doing it with a fascinating device. I think we have some visuals as well. Just we'll, we'll tease you with this, this 360 degree camera yeah, that you're doing. Yeah, because we were allowed tonight. into this, this exhibit room, which is very rare that people are allowed into this. We got in there with our camera. So what we're doing is we're inviting your viewers to come into that room with us. A 360 degree panoramic camera where you can go into the room and with a, your mouse, you can navigate that room. You can search the shelves. There's elephant ivory, as you can see on there. Click on some of the things that are there. You'll get a pop out. You'll get the story behind them and it'll give you a, a real insight into the problem that is wildlife trafficking that's going on in this country see for yourself it's a little shop of horrors it's a little heartbreaking at the same time but it's a fascinating insight to what's happening right now and what these agents are up against trying to stop the smuggling what a great description little shop of horrors mark thanks very much thanks, the stolen treasures mark kelly's investigation is part of that you'll see it tonight 9 p.m on cbc television